before they get to work. The children have to register with Donia Vicky, who assigns them wheelbarrows. It's Saturday, 6.30 in the morning in Cochabamba, a city in central Bolivia. For five Bolivianos a day, the children can rent a wheelbarrow. That's about 50 euro cents. Donicia got up at 3 a.m. to make sure she was one of the first on the list. She knows that's the only way she'll get one of the best wheelbarrows. Sí, me gusta. Donicia says she likes the work. She likes carrying other people's shopping. There are 46 child workers on Doña Vicky's list, and many more across Bolivia, where child labor is a widespread practice. Doña Vicky explains that the children have difficult family backgrounds. They often live with just one parent or with their grandparents. And she says there's a lot of drinking. The children have to work, but what's surprising is that they also want to. Nesa says that the order the goods are loaded is very important. Solid goods go underneath, so as not to squash soft things such as fruit. And heavier things go in the front of the wheelbarrow to make it easier to push. Nesa knows all the tricks. She's been working here at the Feria America market for about five years. She's one of the oldest child workers. She says she was almost 12 when she started. At first she was scared she would drop things or that she would crash into something with her wheelbarrow. She was also really scared she might lose her customer in all the hustle and bustle, as that happens a lot. The government has introduced a minimum age of 14. But this is not easy to enforce. Many child workers are much younger. For many Bolivians, child labor is perfectly acceptable. Few people think twice about hiring a child to help them shop. Juan David is 11. He thinks it's normal that children should work. He says that sometimes mothers or fathers leave the family, so there isn't enough money. He explains that families are big in Bolivia, with four or five children. The customers at this market do not feel guilty, even if their own children do not have to work. This customer says she's trying to help. She says it makes sense to help a young boy buy school books. It's compensation for the fact that he is hired to work. But of course, she says, these kids should be playing just like her children, who right now are at a painting class. As he works, Juan David hopes that he will be paid well. If he's lucky, he'll get 10 bolivianos, about a euro, for 45 minutes of hard work. But the children are not always lucky, and that's why they've set up their own trade union, with their own membership cards. This is our ID, says Ivan. It's to prove that we're not street kids or glue sniffers. Nesa is the trade union leader here, and she's got a tough decision to make. This crisis meeting has been called because some of the children got drunk and beat up a nine-year-old. They violated the union rules. Nesa wonders what to do with them, whether they should be thrown out forever, or for three months, or for three weeks, or one month. She asks what will happen if they come back and cause trouble again.
In the end, it's decided that the children won't be allowed to work at the market for a month. It's a tough verdict. Nesa knows that the children live in difficult conditions and that they badly need the money, just as she does. A few days later, we head to the outskirts of Cochabamba. It's one of the poorest parts of the world. This is where Nesa lives and goes to school. Nesa only works on the weekend. The rest of the time she focuses on her schoolwork. She's one of the best in the class. Her teacher thinks it's totally normal that her pupils work. About half the class does. She says some of them sell clothes or fruit and vegetables or bread. Others work as shoemakers or on building sites. But she acknowledges that some of them say they can't do their homework because of the work. So, even in a school environment, people are not necessarily against child labor. After school, Nesa helps her younger brothers with their homework. She spends most of her earnings from the weekly market on education. She shows us what she has bought with her earnings. She explains that she buys her textbooks and notebooks herself. Nesa's family had almost managed to fight its way out of poverty when one of her siblings had a serious accident. The hospital fees plunged them into massive debt, and they've been paying them back for two years. Nesa's mother says she has debts with three banks, and that's why the family is living as it is. What can she do, she says. The children are already working even though they're still little. She finds it all so painful. Many families are in the same situation. For Nesa, whose income is crucial for the family, there is a positive side to the work. She says it has enabled her to gain self-confidence and to make plans for the future. She says she would like to have her own room with her own things. And she'd like to have a big house and wants to have nine children, but no husband. If her dream comes true, she says she will also want her children to work because she thinks it will make them better people. Back in reality, Gloria has about 20 kilos in her wheelbarrow. And she earns seven bolivianos for all her hard work. That's less than one euro. Gloria says she wants to go over to another customer near the fruit, because she will pay her a lot more money. Unlike Nesa, Gloria doesn't have any plans for the future. And her daily life isn't the same either. She doesn't like school and looks forward to her work all week long. I love the work, she says. I love all kinds of work. Overall, Gloria gets the equivalent of about six euros. That's a decent average wage for eight hours of child labor. Gloria is well-liked at this market. She's earned a reputation for always being in a good mood and concentrating hard on her wheelbarrow. She tells her next customer she's almost done and will be with her in a moment. 
Gloria would love to quit school. Not everyone can juggle school and work. Once a month, child workers from all over Cochabamba get together for a trade union meeting. This is also a time for them to behave like children, to play and to laugh and enjoy life, as well as to talk about their demands. Nessa says they want people to respect children's rights. She explains that adults don't understand their situation because they never went through it themselves, whereas the children understand what it means to work. They know what's dangerous and what isn't. That's why they're getting organized. They want labor rights to be enforced for children from the age of 12 and not 14. They're currently planning a trip to the capital, La Paz, so they can persuade the government to listen to their demands. Nesa says they're doing politics, and they can do it just like grown-ups. <laughs> Nesa and her fellow trade unionists realize that many children will have to work as long as poverty is rampant in Bolivia. But they're doing their best to ensure that their labor is remunerated fairly. They hope that child labor can be a dignified practice, based on rights and not exploitation. <laughs>